is just afternoon. Welcome to this webinar on shared services. Uh, my name is Joss Kreese. I'm the uh, chair of this session um, and I've been working with both EduServe and Socketim on a whole range of shared service issues um, based on uh, some recent, recent research. Um, I'm shortly going to introduce my expert panel uh, but just to kick off, first of all, delighted you could join us for what I think promises to be um, quite an insightful view into shared services from the experts we've got on, on the panel. Many public service organisations are reviewing the part that shared services can play and indeed the role of technology within that. I think it's fair to say that in the past, sharing was about a, a sort of a collaboration to save. It was driven particularly by trying to be more efficient, uh, more productive, sharing resources. And sometimes there was only a fairly weak integration and collaboration, often a little bit reluctant. Uh, but I think we're now seeing a whole range of deeper and more complex models emerging with true partnerships from integrated digital platforms being shared to the full merging of councils. Uh, there are also, though, I think it's fair to say, have been some casualties along the way. Uh, and recent research from Socketim reveals what does and doesn't work in sharing. EduServe have been working with Socketim and have looked at the topic, uh, recently publishing research, as well as a freely available tool um, called RASP, which we'll hear about a little bit later on, which helps with some of the due diligence planning around um, shared services. So, to assess this rich opportunity of risk and change, I'm delighted to welcome my expert set of panellists. First of all, we have Ed Garzis, a leading voice and expert in shared services for, dare I say, many years and currently CIO and CDO for Camden, Haringey and Islington Shared Service. We also have uh, Emma Marinos, Director of Modernise at Southwark Borough Council, who've recently joined the Brent and Lewisham Shared Service. I've known Emma for a while. She's a, an expert witness on sharing and one of the first to use the RASP tool in earnest. Also very pleased to welcome Max Salisbury. He's the editor for the Socketim Shared Service research work and I've been very closely um, working with Max on that. So delighted you could join us from Socketim, Max. And finally, uh, and certainly not least, um, uh, Natasha Avinandal, who is the uh, lead for the EduServe Executive Briefing Program. They've including the development of the RASA tool with Socketim, and uh, Natasha will be engineering today and uh, contributing to the uh, discussion, I hope, uh, as well. So welcome to my panelists. Um, each of them are going to give their take. But for all of you who are listening in, um, you should have the uh, screen in front of you allowing you to ask questions. So please don't be shy about this. As we go through, if you want to either raise a general point, a general question, or indeed want to point a question at one of my panelists, just type in as briefly as you can what you would like to ask, and I will try and make sure that that gets answered. And if we can't have for everything in the 45 minutes, uh, we will certainly be making a, a write-up, and there is a recording of the of the session. So without um, more ado, um, Perhaps I could start by asking um, Ed to, to lead on his take on sharing. Uh, and I know you've got a particular view about the role of trust in all of this, uh, Ed. So over to you. Fantastic. Thank you, Joss. And um, hello, everyone. Um, I guess uh, diving straight into it and, and following on from the points that Joss has just made, um, one of the things that I think sits at the heart of sharing services and, and doing that effectively is, is being explicit about the trade-off between the extent to which we trust people and the extent to which we are able to, apologies Natasha, if we can go back one slide, um, the extent to which we trust people and the extent to which we're willing to give up some of our sovereign turf, if you like. Um, so the slide in front of you shows uh, a very simplistic kind of two-dimensional view of how with greater trust, and a greater willingness to give up turf so we can get further away from simply coexisting and, and through to actually fully integrating our planning, our funding and our decision making around the shared services that we adopt or the sharing that we endeavour to do. I think sitting within this same framework, for me anyway, is a key thing about you know, 
trust and sharing inevitably mean compromise. And, and as sovereign organizations, very often there, there are kind of different views that we need to manage and get around. And if we can find a way of, rather than having a, a, a crucial trade-off or, or bun fight for something, we can actually talk about sequencing stuff, for example, and show a, a, a shared progression that really helps us to do things together rather than apart. So one of the things that falls quite neatly into this space for me is also how we can start to use this language to drive a shared strategy, if you like. Um, and no point in this spectrum is right or wrong, but actually what, what's crucial is that we see the further down the left we are, the more opportunities there are to combine, for example, technology, but the more limited the benefits are. And then the further right we get, the fewer opportunities there are for, for that really deep kind of integration, but the greater the opportunities are. And I think if all of the stakeholders in a shared service have a shared understanding of just how much disruption and complexity they're willing to embark and face up to as part of their shared service, so it's easier to build that shared understanding, that trust, and if you like, almost set a pace that's based on kind of measured steps of getting to the place that we all want to be. And very often I hear people talking as if they want the benefits of the, the kind of same service level of integration, but actually are, are not willing to adopt the same platforms, for example. So I think this kind of framework, this kind of language allows us to understand both the kind of level of trust that's required and also the kind of level of shared ambition that's needed to successfully deliver a shared service. A strategy that sets out whether we're aiming for the same service, the same instance, the same infrastructure, or the same tech can be really helpful in forming that thinking and moving towards it in a common way. Thanks, Ed. That's very helpful indeed. Um, interesting point. Just one very quick question, if I may. On your previous slide, where you start with a sort of coexist through to the deep integration, perhaps, uh, Natasha, you could move back one slide. Um, do you see that as a journey? I mean, do you see a need to start at the sort of coexist level and migrate at well, maybe at pace but migrate through or, or can you leap in if the trust is there um, at, at, at the higher end of that spectrum I think that's a really good question Joss I think there's I mean if I'm honest I think this is what the slide is trying to show is where we want to end up if you like and then so to your question is it possible to start at any point or do we have to work through the steps I think, I personally believe it's possible to start at any point. So I was having this conversation with some stakeholders the other day. There are kind of two views on trust. There's a view that says trust is earned. And in order to show ourselves worthy, we have to start to deliver and then build up that reputation and trust that allows us to move further down the right hand side of the slide. Yes. There's another view that says there's a kind of parental trust model where actually, we trust from the outset. And yes, that trust, you know, maintaining that trust has to be earned, but we don't start off having to earn it to the get go. And I think those different masks, you know, those different kind of starting points are really key. Because if we see a shared service not as the formation of a new organization, but actually of the, as the coming together and, and creating a new thing that we share, it's much more akin to parental trust. And I think to make it compete in its infancy, to make it earn its trust in its infancy, is perhaps jeopardizing its ability to succeed. I mean, I think those are really interesting points. And in, in terms of the practical application and managing the risks associated with that, I mean, you know, if you if you if you misunderstand where you are on the on the on the trust spectrum, and you jump in at the wrong level, you're clearly going to have some risks. Which I think brings us on quite nicely, Emma. If I may bring you in at this point to yeah. your experience um uh particularly around the the due diligence i know you've used the rasp tool and perhaps you could um you could give us your take on that yeah absolutely so um 
We became part of the um, shared services of Brenton Lewisham on the 1st of November. So it's very early days. And for I think what was in common for both ourselves and Lewisham is that we'd been outsourced for many, many years. So I think talking about trust, I think that for probably for both of our organisations, um, I certainly can talk for Southwark, there was a trust deficit in terms of um, IT's ability to deliver. So there was very much a view to want to do something different to um, deliver our particularly keeping the lights on services um, using a different model. So what we did very early on, if just move on to the first slide, is we um, had a workshop with very senior people um, in all three organisations and we both started to look at different parameters for the shared service, really trying to understand where what our different points of view were and to see where our similarities are and where our differences are because I think that then enables the ability to um, not have um, assume, assume that people have got a certain point of view when we don't actually know. So we individually went through this um, uh, through these parameters and look to see what we, how we viewed this. And um, so, you know, if we take take one, take the last two, we're converging. We'll stay unique. And so, so what was our individual organisation's point of view around that, or where we want to grow, or two or three partners is enough. So we individually scored these, and actually it was interesting because we were on most of these um, parameters pretty much in alignment. There were a couple where we were different, um, particularly around growth. Um, so that was really helpful so that we were starting this relationship with our eyes open. So we, and it was also, I think the other thing to say, I think emotions can run very high when you're talking about things like this because I think particularly depending whether you're the sharey or the share or depends where the power is and how much you want to be open about things and the way that this workshop was run it was done in a very non-defensive neutral way so people could be very open and honest which I think was really helpful so then we um, started to do the shared service do all the due diligence and as part of that, so it was sort of a few months in by now, it was in the summer of, it's probably about the summer, July-ish time um, this year. And very helpfully, EduServe um, was, were developing the RASP um, ready, readiness assessment. And what we did here was we got both um, Southwark and Brent, because Brent is the lead authority, to score where we were um, by answering a number of questions around all these different um, aspects of how ready we were for the shared service. And again, even though we may have, the scores may have been different, the pattern was pretty similar. Um, and the areas that really where we identified the gaps were really around not all the technical stuff, not all the due diligence, not all the contracts, not all the estate review and IPs. It was all to do really around communications, business buy-in, political backing, um, agree, you know, things like um, agreeing the principles that we were going to work for, being a buyer or seller, the branding, the identity. And what was really helpful for me was that the project team kind of, it, I think it was probably a bit of a light bulb moment that there were certain gaps that we needed to fill in order for this to land as smoothly as possible. So we then um, we uh, engaged um, some someone to work with us around communication and engagement with the business, um, and somebody dedicated on it. Really, that was their sole purpose was to do that, and that meant that all the kind of stakeholder management all of the mass communication because we were moving from a um, online only, from a help desk which was online only rather than telephone. 
Um, we did loads of road shows. We did a survey. Um, we did a lot of engagement. So come the 1st of November, it very much people knew and understood why we were doing this and were open to the change. So that's, that's kind of the journey that we've been on around building trust and implementing um, a new shared service, which, as Ed has said, it's, it's a new, it's a new organisation. We, we are very much describing it as being akin to an in-house service that is delivering to three local authorities so that we don't try and manage um, this contract in inverted commas as if it's an outsourced um, contract because then it's not, it's, it's different. Um, and going through this process has helped us all within all three councils um, understand how we would work in a very different way than we have done in the past. And I'll leave it at that. Yeah, Emma, thank, thanks for that. I mean, you know, there, there's so much material here. The bit about finding a way of safely rationalizing the, the differences, the issues, you know, whatever you want to call them, so that you can have uh, a, an objective conversation about them, I think is, is, really, is really powerful, as is the, the point that I think you're raising that this has to be a partnership of, of equals. It's not, you know, the big selling to the small or, 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 or anything else. So I, I, I think that's really interesting. Any other comments from my panelists on, on, on either of those first two pitches? No? No, nothing, nothing, from me, nothing from me, Joss, no. Okay, well, uh, what, what, I'd, what I'd like to do is just to introduce our last um, panelist, uh, Max. Um, Max, you and I have been working together on um, quite a lot of uh, analysis on the current state of shared services, particularly yeah. around ICT. Um, Absolutely. So, what I'd be interested to, to hear from you is a little bit about, you know, what, why, why does Soccer Team think this matters? What, what are you finding? Where are the lessons? Um, are there any things that, that perhaps differ from or complement what you've heard from both Ed and uh, from Emma here? By the way, um, uh, if you're listening in, please do give me questions. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. Um, where to start? Um, the I was actually going to conclude the, the little talk I was um, that I've got with a list of things that we have, trends that we've discovered um, and things that have surprised us. I was going to leave that to the end. So uh, if, if you may, I no, might, I might do that. You go through it. You go through it in the way you've, you've set it out. Yeah. Is that, is that okay? It's just that yeah, it's, yeah. It, it ties into that at the end, which, and I think it's a, it's a kind of, it's, it's a nice conclusion. So um, if, if I can, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go through it now, if, if that's all right from the start. Yep. Is everybody happy with that? I'm, yeah. I'm, I hope everybody can. Hello, everybody. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm, I'm getting a few issues here myself. I'm, in, I'm hoping you can, you can all hear everything clearly. Um, but I've got a bit of dropout. But anyhow, um, yeah. Hi. Thanks for listening today. Yeah, I'm, I'm Max from Soccer Team. So I'm just going to go through. I've got a few slides here. And I'm just going to go through this uh, little piece I've got. So uh, first of all, 2011, we published an in-depth 60-page report called Successful Sharing, a Practical Guide for Local Public Services, which looked at the state of shared services service leaders at that time. Uh, we used six contrasting case studies in it. And that followed our seminal work, Planting the Flag, a Strategy for ICT-Enabled Public Services Reform, in which we advocated shared services as one of six strategic capabilities needed to make reform of local public services a reality. So, these are some of the key opportunities um, to develop shared services we identified. Uh, ICT infrastructure, uh, so that would be public service networks and data centres, for example, and associated services, which could be aggregated and managed by fewer organisations, uh, so pretty clearly, really. Uh, senior professionals uh, managing and running, in, running ICT infrastructure and support desks and specialist technical support, which could also be shared. Uh, we identified that ICT could be put in place to uh, enable organisational change, information sharing and integration, uh, such as with health and social care. And then capabilities in leadership, um, governance, strategic commissioning, supplier management and professionalism, which could, could all also be shared. 
Uh, since then, we have developed a rationale for delivering better outcomes by simplifying services, standardizing processes, and sharing solutions. So I'm going to cover, uh, with the help of these slides, it is, it is hopefully, I won't go on too much, not going to be quite brief. I'm going to cover uh, the purpose and scope of our shared services research and the published material, the audiences we are trying to reach, and the key insights from our research. And then at the end as well, before my conclusions, actually, not quite at the end, I'll share some thoughts about the importance of the role of the CIO and the head of ITT in developing and implementing shared service arrangements. So let's, if I start with purpose and scope, uh, we wanted to build a strong evidence base um, knowing what a sophisticated, knowing that a sophisticated and varied range of different shared service management had been evolving in the places served by local governments and their partner and local public service organisations. So we'll, we're going to use that evidence base in two ways. Firstly, we're going to increase our influence and voice with local and national policymakers about the progress being made. And secondly, we're going to provide practical guidance to those on the ground seeking to implement shared service arrangements. So let's see, are we on the right slide here? That'll do. So audiences, we've got four audiences in mind. We've got our soccer team, corporate members and informed subscribers. We've got service heads. Uh, so for example, heads of planning, housing or social care and so on. Uh, C-suite, that is chief executives, directors, council leaders and cabinet members. And then finally, health and social care. So th those leading and implementing integration of services and localities. Beyond all this, um, we're looking at those involved in policy making and implementation at the national level. So that would be the DCLG, Cabinet Office, and the LGA, and so on. So here are some key insights. So I think I need the next slide here. Should be able to click it on. Um, yeah, that's actually that's yeah, that's a list of our guides that are coming out, which I'll talk to you briefly about in a minute as well. Uh, so trust. And that's being open, coming to a common understanding about the strengths and weaknesses of different organisations. Uh, the RASP tool, which we've already discussed, can help enormously at that, at that discovery stage. Adaptability, and that is being open to inevitable changes that will be faced along the way. People, organisations, processes, technology, priorities, and so on, all these things change. And then finally, outcomes, and that's keeping focused on what it is you're trying to deliver and what matters in your place, in your communities, and for your people. Okay, so there we are with some key insights. And then the last slide should be here, which is uh, the role of the CIO. Um, our evidence confirms that the uh, CIO, or Chief Information Officer, has a crucial role to play in delivering a transformation or change in localities. So in the modern world, digital IT is an intrinsic part of anything that we do, but it is not and should never be an end in itself. Different places, demographics, geographies, histories, socio-economic conditions and so on will prioritise different outcomes and need different solutions. And so it's really important that we simplify services, standardise processes and share common solutions. So the CIO has a multifaceted role to play as a servant leader, an attentive collaborator that is listening, hearing and acting, a conductor, a broker, a facilitator, an enabler, a regulator of standards and a protector. That is, and that's covering really important areas such as cyber resilience, ethics and of course the uh, coming GDPR. OK, so I'd just like to wrap it up now. hope I haven't gone on too much um, with a couple of a uh, few things that we've um, we've observed uh, that have become themes over the last five years um, in, in shared services, and that is that most councils are now engaged in some form of shared service model. Um, many of the shared services have failed entirely or failed to scale up. Um, cloud service models are dis disrupting traditional outsourcing and insourcing. Um, well, many others have grown to a substantial size, so some shared services have really taken off. Uh, shared services are increasingly crossing sector boundaries in smart places, so that's worth thinking about with the development area of smart places. Different models of sharing have emerged, so there's no single right basis for sharing, which is, again, I think very important. And um, sharing models have had to become more flexible to adapt and survive pretty, pretty clearly. Uh, and this is, again, important some of the early reasons for sharing which were normally usually driven by economic considerations have proved were proved to be wrong so that's something else that we've uh, we've observed yeah i did say that was a summary i did want to say in the final summary we are at the moment 
producing nine separate guides to shared services. The uh, the first one went out last week. The second is going out tomorrow. There's going to be nine over the coming months, which covers a work that what Joss was um, Joss was alluding to at the start of this. It's um, he's been working really closely with us on that. So there you are. That's that's my contribution. Thank you. Max, thank you for that. That's that's great, and you know it's interesting to see this scale uh, and reach of the work that you're doing, which I do think corroborates with the sort of experience that both um, uh, both Ed and uh, Emma have talked about. You know, yeah. We've just got that uh, RASP, the Readiness Assessment for Shared Services Program, the, the summary of that tool on the screen you can see now. So basically, you you go through an assessment, uh, a self assessment, that uh, looks at where you are on each of these uh, five areas and there are descriptions it's an automated tool so there are descriptions you can go through to, to to sense check where you are and i think i know some organizations do this privately uh just in order to feel confident in order to then do it more publicly with their with their partners um natasha is there anything you wanted to add about the 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 rasp tool um, no, it, it's available free to use um, and um, I will send a link around with the video from this webinar so that everyone um, ha can, can easily access that um, and also that we're with for more feedback I guess. And may yeah. I just add um, because we have used it that it is actually very straightforward to use and you can use it at any point of either thinking about a shared service, you're in the middle of a shared service, you're a mature shared service. So I think it's a really good um, temperature gauge at any point. Great. Um, just before we move on to some some other questions that I think um, pe people are raising, and I've I've, I've certainly got in, in my mind, but Max. Just before we conclude, you made the important point about the role of the CIO or IT, and I think there's something about leadership. CIO IT management leadership in this but there's also something about the role of technology you know maybe providing a neutral space such as the cloud platform or or, or, or maybe a, an alternative to outsourcing as we heard from Emma but but it seems to me that some organizations don't don't really recognize this they don't see IT as any more than a toolkit uh, and certainly some ICT leaders perhaps uh, struggle to step up to the plate I just wondered whether you'd got a view on you know how we, how we can support CIO leaderships uh, leadership and get that message across that it's it's not just about bits of technology it's about the contribution that open platforms can can make to this. Yeah, I think um, it's from what I've picked up so far. I my admittedly short. The, the message which needs to be pushed through is that this stuff this this technology and these roles are uh, they're not as you say they're not just there as a toolkit as, as uh, support they're absolutely integral to the way organizations whether they're private or public are moving forward in the world now that they, they, they cannot tease them about this technology it just doesn't work anymore like that clearly which has been the case for a long time and i think that the way to to get this message across is certainly the work that we do the, with the experts um, we work with to write our briefings is to get that message across in a way that is that is clear to understand clearly clearly understood by people from outside of ICT but are still decision makers all the same people that affect um, have an effect on how ICT develops um, and it's about getting that getting that message uh, clearly across in a way that again, is as I said in, in, in this list, the audiences we're looking at, we're looking at people way beyond IT. We're looking at heads of services, and beyond that, we're looking at uh, decision policy makers at a government, um, national government level. Um, I think that that's that's certainly what we're what we're aiming at here. Great, thanks, thanks for that. Um, so perhaps if I can come back to Emma and Ed now, I want to just uh, touch a little bit on some of the barriers and issues at a practical level that you've seen so you know you've each been through this on a number of occasions you've used some of the tools and techniques you've talked uh, I mean Emma talked a little bit about communications we've not yet talked about politics either with a small p or the need to involve politicians and Ed I was wondering if we, if we start with you your views on some of the obstacles and the, the, the challenges along the way here that perhaps we need to be honest about Sure. I mean, I, I guess, Joss, I 
think you know, I think it was Emma who used the word relationship first, but the relationships are really key. And, and you know, as I look at the RASP tool, which I think is great, and I think it does cover a lot of the um, you know foundations that underpin a shared service. And I think it's almost, in my head anyway, the levels zero through five correspond to the kind of coexistence combine, et cetera, as I would see it. So there, there's something about shared service doesn't mean one thing. It means different things. Having an aligned expectation is important. But actually, over and above all of that, the most often used or abused analogy that I, that I pick up on is it's like a marriage. And, and fundamentally, you know, you can agree all the detail, but if you're not getting on, you're not getting on. And I think there's something in there about expectation. There is something about politics. My experience in Triborough was that when the politics changed, so the relationships changed. And I think one of the learnings I took away from that process is simply continuing to focus on the financial benefits was insufficient to rebuild relationships. And so, yeah. uh, you know, I'm sure for, for Emma, it'll be even more interesting because she's joining effectively an existing shared service. But it's important to, to create an ongoing sense of, uh, you know, uh, at the very minimum, common understanding of who has what privileges in the relationship, but probably a sense of equity for all partners. And I think it's, it's at our peril that we forget the need to keep investing in those relationships that both enable us to succeed, but also enable us to progress along the journey. So that's, for me, that's the biggest one. Okay, I mean, Emma, anything to add to that? Um, I mean, I, 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 I agree and support what Ed has said. It is absolutely vital without um, being able to work through difficulties and conflict, which there will be because you know, working in local authorities, you've got 600 different services, you've got many, many heads of service, you've got many directors who all have got a very strong view, whether that's, you know, they can do this on their iPad at home, so why can't I do it in the office, through to wanting to fundamentally change how their own service is delivered using digital technology and everything in between. So everyone's got a view and it's our um, job to navigate that and make sense of it so that progress can be made and it can be done in a way that is constructive and not de destructive. I think that, um, the, the, I mean, we're in ve very early days, it's, you know, 1st of November we went live, but we are even in the early days where we're not happy about things between any of us we are having very, very regular um, meetings and conversations so that we're working through those things now and where there are differences of opinion, some of those are, they're good and right and proper because out of that often becomes something better, um, but it's not done in a destructive way. So I think behaviours are really, really key um, and it's not something that you ever there you know using Ed's analogy you know you've got to keep working at the marriage you're not it's not going to be right we, we, we can rest on our laurels it's all fine now it's it's a work in progress at all times but I think as time goes on and the maturity um, improves the level of maturity improves you've got more you've got a stronger foundation so when those difficulties come up you've got a stronger foundation to kind of absorb things as they come up because it's very you know for all of us in local government it's very very stressful and demanding jobs and roles with people under a lot of pressure and we're there to help people really in those situations that's all i'd like to add <laughs> Yes, I think it's a good point, and I've certainly seen the shared service agenda being a sort of an additional burden that we just uh, uh, that we just take on, rather than treating it as a you know a major change commitment in itself. I mean, Ed, I think you wanted to come back, didn't you, on that point? Yeah, I mean, I just want to build on to some of so some of the other key things. I think the um, yeah, and I, again, I, I I don't know whether it was Max or Emma, but talked about this notion 
of um, partnership and, and, you know, this being you know, shared services being something we all own. And, and one of the things that I think is really important in that is if we look at the kind of behaviours that sit behind a service that we all own, whether it's shared or sovereign, it's really important that there be advocacy for the service. And I think there's a real risk, and, and it's, a, it's a tight balance to get right, because obviously, you know, as, as the supplier of those digital and IT services to the organizations and, and the boroughs, we need to be clear on what our promise and our commitment is. But we also don't want to be too prescriptive, else we fall into the trap of being a supplier, if you like, in, in the mm. kind of commercial sense. So it's quite important to, to have a clear understanding of what we'll deliver, to have some flexibility around changing that that's perhaps more agile than a contracted partner uh, with, a, with a big C, but also to have advocacy within each of the councils that means that you know myself or Emma or other shared service leads aren't having to run around and pretend that we're sovereign to each all the time because we don't magically have you know, three times as many hours in a week. So I think that that, that behavior, relationship, advocacy, point is the other one that to me feels really key in, in in creating something that is better than simply the economy of scale that you get from buying through a kind of shared procurement initiative or by being part of um, you know a, a code sharing club it, it's something about being that trusted partner and I'd underline both trusted and partner who has the ability to influence the thinking within the organization but also the kind of relationships that mean that people are willing to listen, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it does. But what, what about the political agenda? So, you know, I think in the past, many shared services have been initiated by IT leaders, CIOs in organizations, especially around, you know, sharing technology infrastructure. Uh, and, and we haven't necessarily seen politicians very closely involved uh, from the outset. But I wonder, given the nature of the sharing that Max was describing, that we, where we're seeing some truly deep integration of services with a, with a real long-term commitment, uh, joint commitment and partnership, as you say it, should we be involving our politicians more right from the outset to get that that level of trust, uh, understanding, and support when when things do go a little bit um, uh, you know tough, which they inevitably will on this sort of thing. I mean, I, I, mean, so I sorry, carry on, Emma. Go on, Emma, I, then, I, Emma, then Max, and uh, sorry, Emma, then Ed, and then perhaps Max, you might want to observe on that hmm. one. Yes, please. I think I think I mean I can speak for obviously for the um, Southwark Brent Lewisham shared service. So the polit there was a lot of political alignment between those three boroughs. Um, so I think that to start off with um, kind of gave this legs, if you like, that there, there, there was a real commitment from all three three sets of politicians. So that was really good. I think what's what we've done here is that we, however, have retained sovereignty around our IT and digital strategy, recognising that the three boroughs have got different priorities and different cultures, so that we're not aligning everything that we do so it's the same, that we are recognising that we are different and that where it makes sense to share um, whatever that might mean, um, whether that's between two of the three or all three of the three or not at all, that's what we would do from a kind of digital transformation aspect. So we we haven't, if you like, um, we haven't we haven't decided to go for sharing deeply on everything, which I think which is quite practical. <laughs> It does, it does make it does make sense, though. Presumably, Emma, you have to also avoid the situation where uh, you know, and I've seen this before. Each individual partner says, "Well, I would like a service handcrafted about our local needs and priorities. It'll look different from all the services that the other partners are going to have, but uh, that that's what we want, and then we're on board." How, how do you how do how do you avoid that sort of customization? Um. Well, I think the partners so far again are very sort of um, coming culturally if you like come from a let's do what works rather than trying to reinvent the wheel 
and I'm not just talking about IT and digital teams here, I'm talking about service, heads of service. Um, you know, I think some of this is to be tested, if I'm honest, as we go forward, and we will have to take things on a case-by-case -case basis. I mean, I think that will, there, there will be a, um, a desire to customise, I'm sure, because, you know, even within one authority, people don't want to share. They want their own specific thing that's for <laughs> them yes. only, let alone when it's with three other, you know, other local authorities. But I think even though coming together in a shared service efficiency is still there as a driver for change and will continue to be for all of us um, in the public sector for, for time, time to come. And certainly within my own local authority, people are looking to us to guide them about what's the best solution. Um, so it's too early really to say how it will unfold over the next few months. But I think coming back to trust, we, if we start delivering things, which we will, that make sense, are better and save money, yeah. then why wouldn't you want to do that? Which brings me nicely on to um, the, 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 the sort of positive side of sharing. One of the things, Max, that I've, I've, I've seen in the work that Socketim have been doing is that the drivers and the benefits are much more, uh, as I said in my sort of opening comments, than just just achieving greater productivity and um, uh, and efficiency, which is where we were, you know, probably seven to ten years ago when shared services suddenly became a big a big a big deal mm. so you know yeah. can I take your 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 view on this especially around whether share, sharing can for example stimulate innovation and new ways of working yeah um, from again we, we are we're at a reasonably early stage of, um, of publishing putting together our nine reports so I'm still going through a great deal of work on it and I'm still talking to councils and shared services but the the, again, there are not every story is a success story, but amongst the success stories, there are definite indications that the, the shared service itself has has led uh, they're leading to innovation and to, to new ideas. Um, I mean, just to just to quickly tie it back, Joss, if you if you don't mind, to, yeah. to what, you, what you asked me a, a couple of minutes ago about the about politicians about bringing MPs um, into this and how this ties together. I think that it's that it's absolutely crucial that um that, that the the level of interest is at that is at that level at, at, um, at mp level because let's face it when it was when outsourcing was the was the big thing um that was that was politically driven that that was that was a that was something that was very important for councils to apparently be doing to be to be looking to be bringing in private companies to to take over take over services i think that now things have changed so much in austerity um, that everything now is about saving, obviously. So shared services offer that, that outlet. Now the, the idea that an, M, that an MP or MPs might not might only be dimly aware, if at all, of um, of their um, of shared services in their constituencies, that would that I think that would be pretty a pretty bleak situation if that was the case i think they actually they need to know that at the very least they need to be involved um because um uh, just thinking here in northamptonshire I, I, and I, again i i don't know i don't know enough to know how practical this is if it's actually going to happen but a lot of the talk is is that the the six borough councils in northamptonshire will possibly be dissolved and the county council will take control of all services as a i guess as a as a um, as a money making system which you could argue is going to be the ultimate in shared services that it's all going to come <laughs> in house into one super council which is the ultimate progression but if that's the sort of that if, if, if these kind of um if, if these kind of potentialities are on the cards you shoot changes and uh, shared services which is saying look also, you know, at its, at its base, it's we do this, you do that. We're not in competition with one another. Let's share it. We'll both save money and we'll innovate. Um, so, I think. That, sorry, Josh, carry on. No, I was going to say no. I, I, we're sort of beginning to draw to a close on this, but I think you know the interesting point is, and and, and certainly the the research I think 
Max, that you were referring to from Softim indicates quite a wide range of drivers now for sharing, including you know things like standardization, removing duplication, bringing together capacity and skills that will make a big big difference. Yeah. Um, so, uh, if are there any final, very very brief comments from Ed or Emma on that? We've got a, a, about sixty seconds before we we close this one one down. Nothing from me. Ed, any observations? I mean, I my, yeah, I mean, my, my key perspective, Joss, is I, th I think, of course, the politicians have to be involved. And in, in practice, I think most of the time that means, um, you know, cabinet members and, and in some cases backbenchers. I, I think they can be huge advocates. But I, I think, and this is to that kind of innovation or shared learning, if you like, often seeing the way others have solved the problems that we all face is the starting point to innovating and thinking differently. Mm. It comes back yes. to trust. You've kind of got to be willing to share you know, the good and the bad. Yeah. But if you can do that, I think we can move conversations away from, you know, how do we get the throughput from X to X plus three and yeah. actually say, how could we do this differently? And I think if nothing else, a shared service creates an opportunity to bring those stakeholders together to have those kind of slightly more open-minded conversations. Which and is a I great think point. That's awesome. <laughs> Which is a great and positive point to to finish on. And that certainly I think corresponds with what you, each, each of you have been saying um, uh, this afternoon on this point. I want to thank my panelists, uh, Ed, Emma, uh, Natasha and Max. Thank you very much for taking the time to be with us on this uh, webinar. I think it's been a very interesting uh, discussion. There is a lot of material available for those of you who have been online. Uh, the RASP is freely available. The Socketing research will be coming out. We'll be writing this up. There is a clear role for technology and technologists to play a part in this. Um, but what we've seen this morning is that there is a new approach emerging for many shared services that recognizes both the wide range of opportunities as well as the need to support diversity of different public service organizations. So thank you all very much for joining us. And uh, I hope you'll join us on a future um, EduServe webinar. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.